Hello and welcome to the first of the Eat the Chef blogs. It's December, it's Christmas time. Oh, it's a stressful time of year, isn't it? If you're into your food, then it's one of those times when you sort of feel you have to entertain. I mean, I find, even though I own two restaurants and we regularly cook for 200 people on a Saturday night, I find that Christmas dinner is probably one of the most stressful meals that I cook in the entire year. Generally speaking, our family consists of me, wife, two kids, Hamish and Flo. Hamish is six, Flo is 12. Uh, My mum and dad, um, my sister, her husband, and my nephew, Peter, who is 10. And the way we work is when everyone comes down to ours, then you have to start it well, don't you? You know, if you're going to do your Christmas, you've got to start it well. A little glass of something pink and fizzy is a really nice way to greet all of your guests. But then it gets a little bit stressful, doesn't it? And I don't know about you, but sometimes you'll think you've got to do everything immediately. You can't actually do anything in advance. So my biggest tip I can give you for Christmas is to prepare as much in advance, more of which later. So anyway, so our Christmas day consists of, we're, we're at lunchtime eaters rather than nighttime. I don't know, what about you? Pub at lunchtime, blokes go to the pub, women do the cooking, blokes come back a little bit worse for work, and then we all tuck in, fall asleep, and fall asleep before the Queen's speech has started, all that kind of thing. Anyway, we're, we're a lunchtime crew. So um, we don't know rota. So one year it's me, the next year it's my mum and the next year it's my sister. So this year we decided, well, let's kind of break with tradition. Let's try and find somewhere to go out for Christmas lunch. Always a bit of a problem, isn't it? I think that we've now decided that we're going to go to my mum's, even though we're still kind of deliberating. The thing is, there's, there's a few sort of nice places that we fancy going to, but the deer... You know, the kids aren't going to eat a great deal. They want to play with their toys. And when you're looking at £80 a head, and all of a sudden you've got three kids that aren't going to eat a big load, so that's 240 quid before you've kind of paid for the grown-ups. Someone's got to be designated to driver, normally me. So that means that you know, you're going to have a drink either. So we've now decided it's probably going to be over to my mum. So we all trek over there. Uh, and this year we have the slight dilemma of the fact that when we all stay, then basically there aren't enough beds for all of us to be at my mum's house. So that means we either end up with someone sleeping on the floor or we all go home on a Christmas night. So we go back, me, Ali and the two kids will come back and we'll go back to our house, which is what we think we're going to do this year. Until, of course, I realised that Boxing Day this year, Liverpool are at home to Wolves. No public transport on Boxing Day. My mum's lives on Merseyside. Liverpool, that's on Merseyside too. That's a match made in heaven. But now we've decided that we're going to go to my mum's and that we're probably going to come home on Christmas night, which would mean that it's very unlikely I'm going to go to the match on Boxing Day. So that's my Christmas dilemma. Um, that's not what yours are. You know, when you're going to upload your videos, you're going to send them in, send in your cooking, a little bit of a story to kind of top and tail it is always kind of quite nice. Christmas things are always good. Now, every Saturday, pretty much, I uh, go down to London, and of course, when you're on the train, then you get bored and you need something to eat. So, what kind of things do I make? Well, the joys of Marks and Spencer's always a great boon for me. So, today, I have the delights of mm, 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 tuna pasta some pineapple and then some crisps and some water it's not very exciting is it but it's either that or it's the food on the train uh, which tends to be a little bit dull as well and the rest of the things my time is spent writing recipes got my laptop here and um, sleeping and um, texting people and generally just waiting to get to London um, more later so what do you do? What do you do that's different? What do you do that kind of makes things a little bit more exciting for your Christmas? What's the traditions in your family? Our tradition is we always have to have dough from our potatoes, you know, potatoes, cream, cheese, onion. Um, that's always, always a given that we have to have in our house. No one in our family except for my mum and myself likes sprouts. I love them. The humble sprout is a great thing. If you don't like them, you want to change the way that you eat them, then try them with something like, you know, those pre-packed chestnuts chestnut sprout, a little bit of beetroot, a little bit of orange zest, a little bit of honey at the end is a really lovely way for doing it. So there you go, there's your little tip. Use it as your own, feel free. Other veggie things you can do, parsnips, roast your parsnips, which I'm sure you do. Rather than just using honey on them, which we all tend to do these days, I like things like um, poppy seeds or sunflower seeds are quite nice in them. 
and even a little bit of parmesan cheese and just finish them under the grill so they go nice and sticky and tasty is a really good thing to do. Now what about the main events? What are you having? What are you eating? Turkey going to be traditional? Beef? Goose? Lamb? Pork? Nut roast? Or are you in that situation where you're ignoring it all and it's going to be a microwave menu meal for one and you're having chicken tikka masala because you're just ignoring the whole thing. You're going to watch reruns of all your old favourites. You've bought the wire on box set and you're going to sit there and you're going to watch 12 hours non-stop of the wire. Sounds like a pretty good day to me, that one. Of course, if you normally have turkey and you think, well, it's traditional, isn't it? Well, in fact, it's not. In Britain, our traditional Christmas fare is, in fact, beef. And beef wellington will be a great alternative to do for your Christmas, which is what we should be back doing, really, a good joint of beef. It's our American cousins who've made us go for the old turkey, which is great, but it can be a little bit bland. But I don't mind that. I always go for a bit of the dark meat rather than the pale. I think it's a bit nicer. So beef is our tradition. Goose is a good thing to do. Now, goose is one of those tricky little beasties, or big beasties. The thing with it is, it full of fat goose that's the nature of it if you sort of think it wants to be in water therefore it needs to make sure that it doesn't get soaking wet and therefore freezing cold so it has a big layer of fat so what you need to do is draw as much fat out of it as you can one of the simple things you can do before you start cooking if you pierce the goose all over with a fork and then run it under hot water you'll draw out a little bit of the fat before you actually start to roast it there's other weird things you can do with goose um, a nice thing to do with it you can actually roast it with a little bit of guinness and that just gives it a bit of depth of flavour and sit it up on a rack so as the fat starts to come out that the fat isn't actually kind of oozing back into the bird meanwhile what you've done is you've cleverly of course sat your roasties underneath the goose so all of that beautiful goose fat comes dripping down onto the spuds from the best potatoes that you'll ever have. So veggies, now we mentioned sort of nut roast. It's one of those things, it's a little bit of a kind of, it can be a little bit dry. Now I've got a great recipe for nut roast and I tend to do it in a way um, like you do a meatloaf. Now when you do a meatloaf, you'll tend to soak bread in milk as a good base for it, then add your meaty ingredients. Well, if you do the same thing with a nut loaf, so you soak the bread in the milk, then you've got onions, celery, loads of your nuts, a little bit of carrots in there, smoked paprika, some chilli, a little bit of Tabasco. You're going to get really, really good flavour, lots of herbs and spices, a couple of eggs, pack it, bake it, nice, nice bit of gravy, delicious, and all the veggies that go with it. So that's kind of quite a nice thing to do. Being slightly more alternative, turkey in a curry, why not on Christmas Day? It doesn't just have to be for Boxing Day, does it? Um, but what you need to do is just make sure that your day is stress-free. Prep as much of it as you can in advance. Do all that little crisscrossing of your sprouts on the bottom of the day before. Blanch them off in some boiling water. So all you've got to do is finish them off. Do the same with your carrots. Do the same with your parsnips. Do the same with your, almost with your roasties. Well, the roasties, fresh roasties are a good one. Uh, and your turkey. You hear all these things about different ways to cook, to cook your turkey. I won't insult you by saying, of course you know, that when you pierce it in the thigh, when the juices run clear, then that means that the turkey is ready to be eaten. Happy days, we all know that. Other things you can do to help to make sure that it's nice and moist, you can cook it upside down. So you put the breast side down so all of the moisture runs into it. But I think almost halfway. So you do it on its side, so you've got kind of the legs sitting up, so you know, you're doing that kind of weird thing with it. And that makes it nice and moist, so that will kind of help you a big load as well. Make your gravy in advance, make it all in advance. It's what happens in restaurant situations, we do loads and loads and loads of advanced prep. It therefore means that a big amount of your stuff is done all of the time. Now, if that's the case, that means, of course, that you can spend more time with your guests. That means you can get more time owning presents. It means you can get more time having a little cheeky one. It means, you know, all those like nice little kind of nuts and the canapes and all the other bits and pieces and the Bombay mix that you've got for all of your guests. You get to tuck in to far more of that. So that really, in a nutshell, is my kind of simple guide to what you need to do at Christmas. Because let's face it, that's what December is all about. Aside from that, we're all going to be going on Christmas parties. And of course, those general, very sensible rules. Of course, don't drink too much when you go out. Don't slag your boss off when you do that. And under no circumstances, snog your boss when you're out. No matter how attractive he might seem for the only one night of the year when you're out on your Christmas night out. And uh, just have a big load of fun with it. Um, and don't forget, what we want is to see loads and loads and loads of your videos. Just send loads. Just 
just keep doing it. Every little bit that you do. I'd love someone to just send every single dish that they're doing for Christmas. Every bit of it. Your Christmas pudding, your starters, your canapes, what kind of wine are you going to do? Just tell us. Just do some recommendations. Tell us where you bought your wine from. Tell us how much it costs. Tell us good things about your turkey. Who makes the best turkey? Who does the best veg? What's the best thing to have? What's traditional in your family? What have been your Christmas disasters? What are all those things that make Christmas that thing that we talk about and we stress about all of the time when in reality what we need to do is sit back, relax and enjoy and of course video it all and send it to eatthechef.com.